Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. You guys know I'm your host, Seishu, and today I'm speaking with Peter Doyle, who's in Atlanta, who's a wedding photographer at Storyboard Life, and he is an amazing photographer for one good reason. He doesn't limit himself to just wedding photography, and I think that's what got my attention, really, because I wanted to, to speak with him about his project, uh, where he spent a good deal of time photographing kids in... I believe they're uh, a hospital, uh, perhaps outside of a hospital. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to find out. But these kids have all battled cancer. And the project came about, and he's put a book together. And we're going to talk a little bit about the book as well, because I want to know how he, he started the project, how the book came about, why the book was even necessary. But Peter, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got your start in wedding photography or just photography in general. Well, you know, it's funny. Um... <laughs> I was actually 21 and I was walking with my mom in Best Buy. Gosh, it's been a long time since I even remember that. And she was like, what do you want for Christmas? It's out in California, so it was really hot and it wasn't Christmassy. And I was like, I'm 21. Give me five bucks or something. And she was like, no, what do you want? We were in Best Buy. And so they had the, the film Rebel. I was like, um, I'll take that. And that's where it kind of got started because um, I knew some people who played in bars in college. So I was like, hey, let me go photograph you which the photos turned out terrible, right? Because I think it went down to like five, six. So when it's a low light, you're not getting anything. So I was like, oh, I'm grungy, you know, that type of stuff. So um, that's really kind of how it got started. And then um, uh, a friend of mine, you know, I think it was the 5D, whatever the first digital prosumer that Canon had. So, you know, I spent money on that. And, and I was like, oh, I'll try weddings. That's really cool. And that's kind of where it all got started. And I was like, oh, I can make money on this? Awesome. And so, you know, that's where I kind of got started, uh, the whole thing. So I started with music. Okay. And the funny thing is, um, you know, with concerts, that was the best education to photograph weddings. Because you aren't going to do anything twice at a concert. They jumped up one. They're not doing that again most of the time. So um, it was a great education. And then I just kind of moved to weddings. And, um, and that's kind of about it. Now I'll just, you know, try to do some more. Uh, special projects like the uh, childhood cancer book. Okay, uh, and you said you're you you've shot a lot of music, obviously music and bands. Uh, you're talking about concerts, yeah. or you're talking about portraits of bands? More concerts. Yeah. So, so. Um, like not too long ago, when Sony lent me, I forgot one model. Man, it was one of the first mirrorless ones. I tell you what, Sony's doing some awesome stuff. But I, they lent me that. Went out in a photograph band called Third Day, and then Need to Breathe. And some other ones for a weekend, um, and then been on tour with uh, Third Day okay. uh, once or twice a year. So that's been really good. So I, I love the the music side. Absolutely, um, I think every photographer should photograph music. I think you're right. I think yeah. that that sense of uh, that immediacy uh, is is not quite there in any other thing that that uh, I think mm -hmm. you photograph. Um, tell us a little bit about your wedding photography. What is it that you photograph the most? Is it just mostly in the Atlanta area, or you do you travel quite a bit? Well, mostly it's going to be here. I mean, I've traveled to New York, Missouri, that type of thing. But obviously, it's people here who are going to have a destination wedding. Okay. So most of it's going to most of it's going to be here. Awesome. Well, let's jump to your book project. Okay. Uh, I'm sure this is something that uh, took a lot of time, took a lot of effort. Um, the childhood cancer book, as you called it, um, you started that. Uh, for a particular reason. Why? Well, I'll, I'll kind of go back to it. So the book, Childhood Cancer Portraits, I'm going to give you kind of a background. I've done two other books, um, one called Brand Breast Cancer Portraits, Wisdom from the Journey. Same setup. I did one prior to that where I actually got a Gulfstream gent. They lent it to me for free for the day. Um, you know, you just got to ask the right people at the right time. But the Childhood Cancer book came out because I was actually at the children's, local children's hospital um, doing some business over there and I was in the cafeteria and it was late at night and I noticed, um, you know, when it's not busy, the parents with the kids will come down. Mm -hmm. And so they're sitting there and, and you, you know, the kids are eating and a lot of times they don't know any better. So there's, they typically will have a good time unless they're really in pain. And you can see the concern over the parents. They're just watching their kids eat. You know, I have a three-year-old. I'm like, Hey dude, hang, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I know you have the kids and you just always, and so you can see the, the pain on their parents, and it could be from the financial stress because, you know, if it's a two-parent family that's working, somebody has to take, you know, yep. has to quit the job. 
Um, and so I sat back and went, oh my gosh, what if my kid had it? Because that was, it was like when, when, um, you know, when my wife was pregnant, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, you, you know, I, I hope everything's going to be all right. Sure. Um, and so I thought, oh my gosh, what would I want to have? And that's where it all came from. What would I want to have? So I did some research right then and I couldn't find any books that was satisfying to me. You'll have somebody who say, hey, this is my experience or this is my experience. But I was like, most parents aren't going to sit here and read a 200-page book about one particular person's experience. So I was like, wait a minute, what if I photograph 100? It was just a random mum- number mm-hmm. um, because I wanted to, I'll be honest with you, I wanted the. you got to kind of start with the end in mind. Do you want the, what you're doing to get noticed or not? You photograph 10 or 12, hey, that was really good. You do 100, people start to notice. I actually miscounted to 101. <laughs> Um, and so it was, what would I want to have? And that's where it started. I want a hundred, um, kids. I have include some parents who've lost their kids to cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's go across the country. And so I picked 10 cities. Um, and that's kind of where the, where it started was like, what would I want to have? And then I proceeded, you know, from there. So these weren't shot at the hospital. These were shot in people's homes. Well, <laughs> what happened was. And I'll kind of address what you you said at the beginning, the hospitals, okay? I don't know if we're recording time, but um, hospitals are really tight. You cannot go in there. Um, I was actually kicked out of one, even though the parents invited me in, sure. okay? And so when I started the process of thinking, okay, how am I going to photograph these kids? Do I photograph them out in their yard, that type of thing? I was like, no. When you think childhood cancer, people think, I think sort of generally, you don't think specific to the individual, so I was like, all right, we need to do a portrait that's going to photograph the kids themselves. So um, here I actually have the, the actual book is right here. So with this particular girl, what I did was I photographed, and I wanted with a black background, and I wanted people to go, I'm looking at you, mm-hmm. and that kid is looking at me. Right. And so I wanted to have it more the personal of the kids themselves. So sure. it's actually just a pop-up black background. I got a, a ring light from my, I think it's called My Ring Light, and that was it because I only had maybe two or three minutes with these kids, maybe because they're just like, oh, you know. Um, so I photographed two in, in the hospital, actually, well, actually four, uh, two in Atlanta and two in Las Vegas. Um, and so what I had to do, and this is important when you're working on these types of projects, if you're going to do a project, you want it to get noticed because you're putting your effort into it, is I can't go to the hospital because so they're going to say no. Obviously, I can't go to the individual parents. I tell them, I don't have the childhood, you know, photographer face, right? They're not going to be like, what's going on? Hey, I heard your kid was sick. Can I photograph him? Not going to happen. So what happened was, years ago, an organization foundation called St. Baldrick's uh, Foundation, largest uh, childhood cancer fundraiser, okay? Um, they called me years ago because they were having an event here, and I couldn't do it, so I hooked them up with another photographer who handled it. So what I did was like, oh, I know somebody there. Mm. Let me call them. Well, the original lady was gone. And I just on a voicemail said, hey, I'm Peter Doyle. This is what I'm doing. Can you help me contact uh, the parents? Or what are some ways I can do that? I didn't even ask them to be a part of it. A couple of days later, I get a um, call at the, uh, from the, the head marketing guy at the time. And he said, hey, I really love your idea. What can we do to help you? And I was like, what you, what you can do is help me get in contact with these families. Um, that you already know, because you have to have a, a trusted third party. You have to. And I'll give you a story. There was a, one girl in the book. Um, another photographer said, oh, my gosh, I've been trying to con- photograph her for the longest time. The parents said no. And they were friends. And the parents were like, no, no, no. But through that third trusted third party, because I set it up through affiliate programs that St. Baldrick's and a local rally foundation um, here uh, we're able to raise money and that type of thing. So that's kind of, kind of, you know, kind of where it started. Okay. But the process of finding a third party tr- trusted, um, you know, party that's going to help you get the word out is is going to be the key thing. Because if not, it's it's most likely going to fail. And was like, oh, that was a good idea, but nothing's going to happen from it. Uh, interestingly, you 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 said at least twice that you've thought about the end in mind. And the, was yeah. it, was the end always a book for you? Yeah, um, because two forms. One is um, people like to see books, 
And most of the time, and this is where you have to know, you know, who the market's for. Um, most of these parents, you know, you want to have something they can take with them or they can read and put back down. Um, we actually made it into an ebook because a lot of them have iPads and the kids are always going to be there. And so um, instead of them having to pile up books and go to the hospital, they can just put it on, on mm -hmm. their iPad. Sure. Um, but I had to do it because I had to think, okay, how am I going to photograph this? What's going to work well with the book versus it's only going to be on the digital side? Because I can always go to the, back, the book, work back to the um, digital, but if you just only shoot for the digital side, you may have a hard time pushing it to the book. And you're like, that's a, I mean, I'm not going to have a chance to go back. And once you photograph the kids in this particular right. case, you're, just, you're not going to have a chance to go back. Say, oh, sorry, I messed up. No, they, they have more important things they're dealing with. Absolutely. Um, so the book project came about, uh, and was that funded by the foundation, or was it you that came up with the money? It was all me. Was it? Yeah, it was all wow. Me. It was, it was all, all self-funded. So, Can you um, share with me how much that, that book cost? Um, I'm thinking probably with travel and everything, about maybe 5000 was, uh, I had to work a lot of extra hours. and. <laughs> Is that was, it? Really? I was, yeah, it was, it was uh, because what I did was I went to 10 different cities, okay? Because sure. I want to make it a regional yeah. one to different cities. So what I did, I was like, all right, where does, how, where does Southwest go? You know, direct flights and from Atlanta. And that's where it started. So, for example, I went to Chicago um, for a day. So I fly in Saturday morning, photograph all day. Uh, maybe stay all, I slept at the, ho at the airport and took the fl first flight out. Um, same thing with <clears throat> Seattle. Now, um, uh, to cause, you got to be real, real uh, creative. So uh, we had a, actually a wedding to go to in Dallas. So we went to Dallas. Then I went photographed in Dallas, flew to Seattle for a day, Los Angeles for a day, Las Vegas for 13 hours, and then flew back. So all those one way it, 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 we wouldn't have been able to do if we tried to do, you know, back to forth, back to forth. Sure. But you have to be real creative. So um, because I knew that this um, that this could be really big, that I think that would help a lot of people. In fact, we had somebody buy six, seven hundred dollars worth of books to give out as gifts. How much do these books so, uh, sell for? Um, it's on Amazon under Childhood Cancer Portraits. I think it runs a little bit under forty dollars. And as far as the production of the book itself, though, is that something that is uh also self-funded? I mean, I'm sure a book of yep. this size uh, must cost you more than $5,000 to put together. Eh, well, <laughs> I actually have a uh, family member who does a lot of design layouts within design, that type of thing. Uh -huh. So I was, able, I was able to pay her from, from the sales of the book, her regular cost. It was just more of after we sell it, if it does well, then I'll be able to give you what you, what you should be getting. Um, so I had her... Um, uh, outline, um, create the book, design mm -hmm. the outline. It was more what I said, okay, this is what I want to have, and can you do this for me? And she did the editing. So um, I would not have been able to do a quality book if I had to do it all myself. You have to outsource. So um, to give you an example, so I would photograph one weekend. Mm -hmm. I would upload, I would pick the photo that I wanted. I would upload that to Dropbox. And in Google Docs, I had a whole list and said, here's the edits I want to be done. And then she would do it. Then I would approve it. So that was the process. It was very quick. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty much you know all me. And you got to have it. You got to have a team of people. <laughs> How about that. the printing costs? I'm sure that costs a lot of money too. It actually does not. Now, I did one where a oh. book like this. It's all color. Yeah. Okay. You see, it's it's all color. Yeah. Um, normally, a book like this, because it's over 200 pages, is going to cost 50, 60 bucks, and you're going to charge for 100 dollars. Well, Amazon, I, last minute I found out um, they own a company called CreateSpace, createspace.com. And you can upload your book there. And it's super, I mean, I can buy them and just give them away. It's, it's not a big. Um, so it's, it's an on demand kind of thing, is it? Yep. It's absolutely on demand. So it may take a week or so gotcha. for, for the book to get to whoever it is. But you just upload on CreateSpace and you can sell it on your own, which I did to raise money or just you know have Amazon take care of it. Awesome. Um, where can uh, folks find the book? Is it all, uh, sort of a, a link off of your website? or? Yeah. I mean, if you just go to uh, uh, childhoodcancerportraits.com, okay. they'll find you know That'll link to my site and also to the page for the, for the book itself. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, what's next for you? 
Um, I'm actually in a, and I, I think I have one more book in me. So I'm actually working on a um, book that's going to uh, feature uh, veterans from World War II up and ask them uh, to share their wisdom the same format um, about life sacrifice and, uh, and courage. My dad was a Navy SEAL in Vietnam. He's buried in Arlington. So after I finished oh. this, I was like, oh, I can do this. So I remember, uh, you know, the wisdom that my dad uh, shared with me. And I was like, you know, I think that some people want to, you know, would enjoy uh, hearing about that or, or reading about that. Right. Uh, on a personal level, uh, Peter, what, what does doing books like these uh, tell you about yourself? Oh, I, I've never had that question. Um, you know, it makes me think, you know, I have a personal motto like I put on Twitter and everywhere, and you know, that I want to live a life that's going to um, make my grandchildren proud. Um, because my, my grandfather, his parents, um, he was born in the early 1900s. His parent, both of his parents died by the time he was uh, a teenager, and so he was just on his own. Um, he never learned how to read, but he ran a gas station for 20 years. Um, and then I look at with what uh, my dad did. He was, um, you know, he was in Vietnam. He, he did seven tours, I think, as a Navy SEAL. And wow. um, I, don't even, I don't even think he got a Purple Heart. Um, and so, and, and what he meant and um, the wisdom he shared with me is, is, um, is going to affect, you know, my, my grandfather really, I was like really impressed and I want my son to be impressed with my my dad, and so he's going to have kids, hopefully, and so I want them to go, wow, that Peter guy was, was something else. So I think it's just really about um, about legacy, that you're going to leave something. My dad always said when we went camping, you want to leave it better than how you found it. So right. I kind of look, and I think the books, um, everything's going digital, but people want to, people like to see books, and, um, you know, with the, with the hand, you know, the handwriting, yeah. people want to see the notes. Um, uh, tell me, I mean, I know uh, we've spoken for quite a bit of time now, but I, I'm curious to know what brought, what gave you the idea to marry the the pictures or the portraits with with their own text, with their own handwriting? Yeah, um, I actually got it from um, uh, Brian Smith, um, the photographer, and uh, Kayla Lindquist from Sony. Um, he put a book together called Art and Soul and had all the, um, and so... Uh, when I was thinking about this, because I did this, this is my second book of this kind. So when I um, did this, I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's the." And I just, I just did the same format. Sure, sure. <laughs> so you, I mean, when I when I started this whole thing, I did a lot of research. You can't just go, "Oh, I'll just try this," because a lot of times when you photograph once, you can't go back and photograph again. So you want to have a game plan um, from the beginning to the end, so you know that you're you're on schedule because. Uh, this, this whole book from beginning, really photographing to the end was about a year. Uh, my last question for you, and perhaps the most important one, how have the children experienced this book for themselves? You know, they love it. Um, I think when you have a kid, um, I'll give you a story with it. I have a, um, a kid named Bailey. Um, photographed here at 10 years old she had to decide to if she was going to have her leg amputated or not because of a bone cancer she was very athletic wanted to get out there but if she didn't have an amputated she wouldn't have been able to do it I think with the kids when you say what do you think about something can you share wisdom to help other kids I think they go and say you know what I matter what I think matters, what I say matters, that what they, you know, their experience can help another kid. And I think that's what they enjoy when they go, oh my gosh, I'm going to be part of this book. A lot of times they may be, they have pictures taken and all that type of other things, but when they go, I want to be part of this book, they get really excited about it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's, it's uh, inspiring to hear your your approach to this project and inspired to hear your forthcoming project as well. Um, I, I'm sure it'll be fantastic. Um, uh, thanks for joining me today, Peter. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. It was an honor being on here. Thank you so much for asking. Take care. Bye. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm.